Welcome to another quick tutorial with your instructional technology specialist, Leslie Johnson. So today we're going to check out Nearpod. Now there are three ways to get to Nearpod. You can of course go to nearpod.com and this is how your students might enter a join code if they have that. You can sign up for free or you can log in if you already have an account. Um, I would actually recommend getting the Nearpod for Classroom extension because when you click on that, it does launch a new tab that automatically logs you in. Now it's taking me to my profile information because it really wants me to upgrade, but once you click that Nearpod icon, it takes you back to the library. Now, if you do have, actually let's go to the pricing plans. If you do have the gold version, um, you have more storage, you have um, the ability to use the Google Slides add-on. So I do not have this, but when I click on this add-on, you can um, either search for it or you can um, open Nearpod and it does give you that option. But like I said, it's going to tell me if you're a gold member and here, if you're a gold member, you can upgrade for 30 days to try it for free. So if this is something you wanna test out and maybe go to your administrator with and say, hey, this is pretty cool, feel free to do that. I'm not gonna click it yet because I want to show you the absolutely 100% free version. So we can still do things, we can Nearpod eyes with 20 plus media and formative assessments, and we can have 40 students per session, blah, blah, blah. It sounds like it's still a worthwhile tool, even though we'll have some limits. So when we are in Nearpod in our account, um, you also have the option to join a lesson here. So I'm assuming if your students have this uh, extension loaded as well, they would be able to click that and put in the join code, which might be faster than going to nearpod.com. We'll have to test it out. Um, it automatically defaults to my library. There's not much in there because honestly, I haven't used Nearpod very much. Uh, the next option is the reports. And since I don't have a classroom, this is not going to be very exciting to look at. I have no data to report. But if you did do some Nearpod sessions, you can go back to those reports to see them. And then of course we have the Nearpod library. This is really what we want to explore. They have ready-made lessons and things like that. Well, lessons, activities, and videos. So you can choose which you would like to use. So if I do videos, and maybe I want to use the next gen standard. So of course it's a science. And then high school will say, let's just see what pops up. So they've got sustainability, bacteria and viruses, RNA, DNA, um, lots and lots of options here. So that's really a plus about this. Now, when I click play, it's going to preview this particular video for me, I think. Yeah, okay, so I get the option to teach, preview, or add to my lessons. Let's go ahead and preview. That way we know this is for sure what I want. We're gonna talk about sustainability in John. We're not gonna watch the whole thing. But if you did want to keep this, it does come with some handouts. It talks about exactly which standard, and it even has related videos. So if it wasn't exactly what I wanted, I can keep filtering here. Um, I believe I can go back, I guess I use the back button to return to my search criteria. So if I didn't want just videos, I could do maybe lessons. So if I want to take an entire lesson about the structure of an atom or coral reef or any of these, um, these do have the option underneath it to say, Let's preview this. So let's see this mini lesson about overpopulation. So I can again click that preview button and it's gonna take me through just different parts of the lesson. If I do like it, I can share the preview. So if I'm PLCing with someone, I can email it to them. I can post it on social media. I can just get the link and send it to someone. Um, we probably aren't going to be embedding, or you could send it through Remind. Whoa, let's not do that right now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. We're not going to share this lesson quite yet, but when you add the lesson, this is what it will do. It says lesson successfully added. 
So now I believe I'm going to click on this Nearpod icon again, and that's always going to take me back to my library. So here I have my lesson. Now I can edit it if I want to. I can preview it again, or I can do a live participation for Zoom, which we don't have Zoom. So we would do the live participation, or we could do a student paste. We're going to go ahead and do the live participation. Okay, so when we've launched, we've got this code. I can click on this share button and I can actually post that into Google Classroom so that my students can access it quickly. So I can choose exactly which classroom I would like to do to use. So if I throw that in my test classroom, I can choose if I want to create an assignment, ask a question, make it an announcement or create a material. I'm going to try to make it an announcement. Go. We are doing this today in class. And then I can post it. And it's going to automatically post into Google Classroom. I can view it from there to see from the teacher side what it would look like. So here's my announcement. It does post in the stream as opposed to the classwork tab. But then students are able to click on that and that will launch the Nearpod lesson for them. Or you just copy this particular code and put it into your Google Meet link. Now the other option is that student paste. So again, we have um, this code that we can give students and then they are the ones who are in charge of going through their lesson. So that's basically it for using a pre-made Nearpod lesson. Next time we will explore a lesson created from within Nearpod.